check one, two. This is Noah via the lead. I'm the presenter with Shortcuts, and thank you for sitting in on our inaugural classroom session. This is Monday, April 15th. I'm just making some audio adjustments right now and some video adjustments. I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. On the right side of your screen, you are going to see <coughs> sorry, a chat uh, window as well as a question window in which you can type in your responses, see if you can hear me. And at the end of today's session, you can also ask questions using the questions or the chat dialog on the right side. I will be making some edits at the end of this presentation. So some of the questions you may not hear once I upload this video, but if you do have any other questions, I will provide a phone number as well as an email at the end. So you can always ask me a follow-up before the next classroom presentation. So I believe everything is synchronizing right now. I'm going to switch to the main PowerPoint and let's make sure everything is showing. It looks good. The audio should be recording. And if there are any problems, I'll be sure to check the chat window on the side. So let's actually begin. So again, my name's Noah by the lead. I am presenting today's classroom session. And again, this is the first classroom session from Shortcuts. So if you're new to Shortcuts, whether you're a barbershop, a salon, or a spa, or you have a new employee and you want them to learn how to work with the appointment book, or if it's been a few years since your last formal training with Shortcuts, this is the perfect introduction for you. So today's focus is the appointment book. And similar to our other presentations or other webinars, we do have some first things that we want to do. So this presentation, it's relatively short, but we will cover a number of things. My microphone is on, and of course, everybody else has been muted, so hopefully you can hear me. If there's any audio problems, let me know on the right side of the screen, and I'll make sure to address those. So we will take questions at the end, usually at the end, but if something pertinent comes up, if my audio drops out or if the video drops out, just let me know. Go ahead and put in a question on the side where you have a question or a chat box. So let's actually begin. So today we're talking about the appointment book. We have a few goals for today. Understanding the basics of the appointment book screen, how to navigate, how to find your way around. Some of the basics and even some more advanced things. Working with tags, working with tasks, which is going to help you track your staff and track your customers. Some appointment book extras, and we'll even talk a little bit about the cloud appointment book. So navigating around the actual point of sale appointment book. How do you find your staff information? How do you find your business information? How do you navigate forwards and backwards through your appointment book? How do you use the calendars, filters, the appointment assistant, work with the wait list? So these are things that everybody that's ever used shortcuts should be familiar with. And if you never have, we're going to begin with a beginning. So we're going to bring up shortcuts. This is one of the recent builds while it's coming up. Let me get a quick drink of water before I lose my voice. Okay, and it looks like it's coming up. So the main appointment book screen, when it comes up, it is very much an electronic version of the traditional, the classic paper appointment book. So if you notice at the top of the screen, we have the names of our staff members. So my fictional staff members, George, Brad, Andy, and Matt. On the left side of the screen are the hours of the day. And notice it's not a 24-hour day. Instead, it's from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. So this would be my business day. So on the top left corner, it'll also show what day we're currently looking at. Now, like I said, this is an electronic version of tr the traditional appointment book. At the very bottom center of the screen, we have the today button, which if you press it, will snap back to today or go forwards or backwards one day at a time or one week at a time. Now, let's say you have a customer Perhaps they're going to get married and they need to plan for even further than a week or two. On the very top left corner, 
you're going to have something that shows whatever day you're looking at. In this case, it says Monday the 15th of April. If I press the button on the top left corner of the screen, Shortcuts brings up the calendar view. So I can scroll through using the pull down menu at the top of the screen a different month. Perhaps somebody is planning a wedding in the fall or they're planning a wedding next year. So you can choose the month and even choose the year. And if you notice, the months on the calendar view are sideways. If you use your mouse or if you have a touch screen, you can actually click and drag using the months on the side in case you just need to see a week or two. Now, Shortcuts is designed for both mouses and computers to have touch screens. So sometimes I may mention a right click command, for example. If you're using a touch screen, the way a right click works is you just hold down your finger for longer than a second and Shortcuts will, will treat it as a right click. So for example, at the bottom of the screen, where we have the today button, the day button, and the week button. If, let's say, a customer wants to make an appointment two weeks, four weeks, or six weeks in advance, then on the bottom right corner, where it says week, if I right-click that button, shortcuts will allow me to jump ahead two, four, or six weeks at a time. Now, if you're using a touch screen, if you just hold your finger on the week button, the same window pops up two, four, or six weeks at a time. And it looks like my audio should still be recording. Now on the bottom left corner, you're going to see something that looks like an hourglass. This is going to be the wait list. We'll talk about how to use it in a moment. <coughs> on next to that is a filter button. It looks like a little funnel and it allows you to search via based on whose schedule, who's available, or what special filters your staff has. On the right side, the plus button is our appointment assistant. <coughs> and next to that is the menu button. So let's say you want to focus on a portion of your schedule for the day. So you can say, I only want to see half my day at a time. So in, instead of seeing from the time I open to the time I close, I'm just looking at my afternoon. On the left side of the screen, where the hours of the day are, I can click and drag, or if I have my touch screen, I can just use my finger and click and drag and scroll up or down on the schedule. Or I can tell shortcuts, I want to look at more of my day. <coughs> so these are some of the basic buttons that everybody should know about in shortcuts. So now let's go back to our presentation. And we're actually going to look at a few things. So we just went through the live demo, but now you need to learn some basics. Now that you know where things are placed on the appointment book, you need to know how to make an appointment, whether it's for a new customer or an existing customer. You need to know how to move and resize your appointments <coughs> or how to remove appointments. An appointment status. Do you have a salon or a spa that has a number of chairs and it sometimes gets busy? So you want to make sure that you're tracking your customers. Have they arrived? Have they confirmed their appointments or are they no-shows? How does a touch tip work? What information is provided for your staff? So with that in mind, let's actually look at these things. So making an appointment, moving an appointment, resizing an appointment. So back in shortcuts. Making an appointment, it's very simple. So I am going to delete an appointment. And again, I'll talk about how to delete. So at the very top of the screen, my third employee, Andy. So let's say it's the morning and Andy has availabilities and we want to make an appointment for Andy. As soon as you click or using your touch screen, one of these empty blocks under the employee's name, then shortcuts will show you your client list and let you choose which customer you're making the appointment for. Now, sometimes you're clicking and you're not quite sure. Am I clicking on 9.30 or 9.15? I can't really tell because my clock is on the far left side. But if you notice on the far left side of the screen, as I click and drag, shortcuts will actually highlight in yellow 
what time am I making an appointment for? So I want to make an appointment for 9.30. So I'll choose that empty block, and out comes the client list. <coughs> now, by default, shortcuts will show you all of your customers. On the right side, you can tell shortcuts, I'd like to search by last name or first name or even a contact number. And on the top center of the screen, I can just start typing a name and shortcuts will narrow down the list. Now on the right side, if I had a brand new customer, perhaps they're calling and they'd like to make an appointment or they're coming in for the very first time, I can press the new button and add a new customer. So I'll actually do that. I'll add a new customer. <coughs> as soon as I press new, Shortcuts brings up what's called the quick screen. What the quick screen is designed to do is give you or ask you, what is the minimum amount of information you need to ask any new client before a shortcut saves it? Now, your salon or spa or barbershop may actually have a different list of questions than what you see here. You can actually customize this list. So Shortcuts usually recommends that you want to get a first name, a last name, a phone number, in our case we prefer cell phone, and an email address. But if your site prefers to get zip codes or other pieces of information, again, you're welcome to customize that quick screen. On the right side, if you do need to capture more demographic information, you can always choose the detailed, and this is additional demographic information you can capture, or all, and this is all the possible information you can record for any customer. <coughs> so you can see the list gets really, really big. So I'm going to go to the quick screen and I'm going to add just a customer. So let's say the first customer that comes in is Dave Rogers. And I'd like to get a phone number. So we'll get a classic 555 number. And if I manage to get an email, we of course want to capture it. Now, because of privacy settings, security settings, one of the options that you can now have when you're capturing client information, especially if you're asking for a phone or a cell, or sorry, a cell or an email, is does this customer want to get confirmation messages, yes or no, to confirm their appointment? That's one question. But the other question is, going forwards, whenever you send out marketing, do you want this customer to get email marketing, for example, yes or no? So the customer can actually say, yes, I would like to get confirmations via email, but no, I do not want to get any marketing, any sort of email campaigns from you. So you can actually check and uncheck which one of those they get to see. And again, this list is customizable. So you can actually ask questions on marketing, on confirmations, on ongoing uh, communications such as customer surveys. So the customer can, right the first time you add them, actually choose what they want to uh, provide their information for or their privacy. So again, <clears throat> we're gonna add our customer, Dave Rogers, and we'll put in a number and an email. And I'm not actually going to email this person. As soon as I press done, his name appears on my list. So now I can choose him and then press done again. Once you select the customer, the second thing that Shortcuts does is it asks you to place a tag with them. Now, some spas, some barbershops, they do not require tags and they don't ask their staff to capture tags. This is an option. <clears throat> but tags are very useful for marking your customers and getting specific pieces of information. Because at the end of the week or at the end of the month when you're running your reports, you want to get a headcount on the types of customers you had. And if you use a tag, you can be very specific. You can tell shortcuts. How many new clients did I have this month? 
or how many salon regulars came in this month or how many requested a specific employee. So if you're using your tags, the tag usage report can actually give you that information. In this case, this is a new client, so I'll give him the new client tag and then I'll press done. Now you can customize this list. You don't have to use which Orchids has for default. You can create your own custom tags. <coughs> The second thing Shortcuts does after you choose a customer and give them a tag is Shortcuts will ask you what service would they like. Now on the left side of the screen, you have your categories. In this case, we focus mainly on men's services, so we have a fairly small list. But if you're a larger salon or spa, you may have a, do a dozen different categories and a hundred different services. So on the left side, you'll be able to navigate through any one of those specific categories. So this customer wants a haircut. So I'll click my haircut category. And on the right, I'll choose the specific type of haircut. So this customer wants to get an executive cut. As soon as I choose that, then in the bottom center of the screen, it says Andy is doing an executive cut at 9.30 this morning. If I made a mistake while selecting the service, I can press the little recycle bin icon on the bottom center of the screen and choose a different service. But I'll keep it to the executive cut and press done. And just like that, Dave's appointment appears underneath Andy's column. So you'll notice every appointment on the books usually appears in green. Now that's the default. We'll talk about changing statuses in just a sec. So every appointment whenever you're added in shortcuts, always appears in a certain shade. And not only that, there's a few pieces of information that repeat for every customer that we have. On the top left corner, you're actually going to have the tag for that specific customer. In this case, Dave is a new client, so it actually says the word new on the top left corner of his appointment. And on the far left corner, the customer, Rob Marley, He's a, he's a salon regular, or he's a new client, but he's requesting a specific employee, in this case, George. And then our test customer, he's requesting George, so that's an REQ tag. On the top right corner, it's a little blue square with the letter I. What that stands for is information. Shortcuts will always ask, is there any new information you can ask for this customer? Whether it's an email, or a phone number, or some other contact details. Shortcuts is very diligent about reminding you, about reminding your staff, your front desk, if you can get more information from this customer, go ahead and record it for them. Now, in this scenario, when you're making appointments, they appear as is. In this case, Dave's appointment is for an executive haircut. And if you notice, you don't really know what service he's receiving. It only says Dave Rogers. But if I click one time on his appointment, at the very bottom of the screen, Shortcuts will show me what's called the touch tip. It'll say who's the customer, when are they coming in, and what service are they getting. So when Andy is looking at his schedule and he's like, well, I, I'm not quite sure what Dave's getting because I don't see the name of the service. If Andy clicks on Dave's appointment, it'll appear right at the bottom of the screen on the touch tip. Now, the two shades of green that we're looking at, the light shade and the dark shade, they actually do something different. Now, if you're using your mouse or if you're using your touch screen, let's say Dave comes in, he wants to get an executive cut, but as soon as he gets in the chair, Andy realizes, wow, Dave has a lot of hair, it's all the way down his back. I'm going to need an extra 15, maybe an extra 30 minutes to do a proper haircut. So the default 30 minutes is not enough time. So to resize it, Andy or whoever your front desk person is can go to Dave's appointment and click on the dark shaded area and drag that appointment down. So clicking on the dark shaded area allows you to change the length of the appointment. And you notice, the longer the appointment gets, the more information appears on it. So it went from Dave Rogers to Dave Rogers' executive cut 
to his contact number. And notice when I'm talking about moving the length of the appointment, I mention the dark shaded area. I don't say click on the right side of the appointment or click on the left side of the appointment because if the appointment gets very long, the colors change positions. So always click on the dark shaded area to make the appointment longer or shorter. So we're going to give him an extra 30 minutes. So now Dave's appointment is an hour long. Now, on the left side of his appointment, the light shaded area, if for whatever reason Andy can't do this service or he wants to assign it to a different staff member, that's when you can click and drag the light shaded area. So if Dave is running late and he says, oh, I need to move my appointment from 930 this morning to 1030, well, perhaps that's going to cut into one of Andy's appointments. So he'll ask Brad. Brad, can you take this appointment? And Shortcuts will let you move the appointment to that time. So the light shaded area lets you move the appointment up, down, left, or right. And the dark shaded area lets you change the length of the appointment. So it's very easy to make an appointment, to add a customer, to choose a service, and even to move the appointment around or to give the customer a little bit more time or a little bit less time when they come in. So that's making an appointment, moving an appointment. So now some of the other advanced features, deleting an appointment or adjusting the status of the appointment. From the appointment book, if you right click on an appointment, the top portion of this will allow you to change the status. So when Dave actually arrives, I can mark him as arrived. And if a customer gets an email confirmation or a text confirmation and they confirm, that will also change the color. So when they confirm on your appointment book, it will actually put it in a light green shade. If a customer is a no-show and we mark them as a no-show, shortcuts will mark it red. And once their customer is a no-show, if you decide to delete them, you can right-click again, and at the very bottom of the screen, there's a delete button. So why would I mark a client as a no-show before I delete them? Why don't I just delete the appointment? Because we want to keep an eye on any customers that may become chronically late or just habitual no-shows so that we're always cautious about accepting their appointment. If I tell Shortcuts this customer is a no-show and then I delete the appointment, Shortcuts will actually put a little tag with that customer. And the next time they make an appointment, there will be a little red X next to the customer's name. Just to remind you, the last time this customer made an appointment, they failed to show up. So it'll make you a little bit cautious about that. But in this case, I'll say Rob is a good person, and I will undo that no-show. So this allows me to change the status. This allows me to delete appointments as well. So this, again, is a right-click on any existing appointment. If you are using a touchscreen, remember the right-click command, you just hold your finger down for longer than a second, and it brings up the same exact menu. Let's go back to our presentation. So we know now a little bit more about booking an appointment with existing customers or new clients. How to move these appointments, how to resize them, add more time, take away time, or give them to a different employee. Working with the status. How do you mark a customer as arrived or a no-show? How do you delete that appointment. <clears throat> so that was our live demo we just did. So the big two, tags and tasks. Now the alliteration is terrible when I'm trying to explain this. You may inadvertently hear one or the other. Tags allow you to track customers. So this is where we tell shortcuts every time they make an appointment, this customer is a new client or a salon regular or they requested an employee. Those are traditional tags. But for your staff, you want to be able 
to make sure that you can mark time for the customer, or in this case, the employee, that's not necessarily an appointment. Some examples can include if they're taking a lunch break, or if they have to go to daycare, or pick somebody up from the airport. You want to make sure that Shortcuts knows to block out time for this employee so that nobody tries to make an appointment with them. So how do you use tasks in this case? So let's actually look at those tasks. So if you notice, I have a number of tasks on my screen. I'm going to delete a few of these and we'll add them again. So these light gray boxes, a task appears in light gray. An appointment with a customer appears in green, traditionally. So I don't want to have all of my employees out to lunch at the same time. I'd prefer that only one employee goes to lunch at a time and I have three persons available on staff either to take care of their appointments or have a walk-in client. So if you notice, Matt on the right side is the very first person to take a lunch. He goes at 12.30. The very next person is Andy. Andy goes at one o'clock. So then the next person that I want to mark a lunch for is George. So I'll click on his 1.30 time as if I'm making an appointment for him. And again, Shortcuts brings up the customer list. But if you look at the very top left corner, there's a button that says Schedule a Task. So I can select that and then press Done. So Shortcuts may have as many tasks as you need. There are no defaults or there are ne not necessarily a list that are already there for you. You get to create your own tasks. Usually those are things like lunches or assisting another employee or going to a meeting. In this case, I can choose lunch. I've already created my task. Now, my default lunch is usually 60 minutes, an hour. So I'll choose the lunch and press done. And it blocks it out on the appointment book as if it were a one hour appointment. So no customer can block out this time. And if you're using online booking, this is very important. No customer using online booking can try to block out an appointment at the same time as a task. So this is how you can protect your staff. You can actually put tasks ahead on your schedule, whether it's one week or two weeks out, and mark out all of their lunch breaks. Or if they have to go pick somebody up next Tuesday from the airport, you can block out some time for that specific staff member. The other thing you'll notice is that every task is in the same light shade and dark shade as our regular appointments. So the same rule applies. If I decide lunch should not be an hour, lunch should be 30 minutes, I can click on the dark shaded area and shorten George's lunch break. Or maybe he needs the whole hour. Or George decides, you know what, I'm going to take care of one more walk-in customer during this time. Why don't you give Brad the lunch and it's okay if his lunch is at 12, at 145. So I can click the light shaded area and assign the task to Brad instead. So now Matt's will be out at his lunch break, Andy will be out at his lunch break, and Brad will be out in his lunch break, and none of those lunch breaks overlap. So I always have three of my four employees available in the afternoon. And then at 2.30 or 2.15, that's when George decides he would like to take his lunch. So again, you can make as many tasks as you need. If you have an employee, Andy, for example, has to go to daycare in the middle of the afternoon, and you know it's a 45 minute round trip, so you don't want customers to try to book an appointment with him. then. So we can schedule a task, I've already created it, but you can always press new and create a new task. So I'll choose daycare and I'll tell shortcuts. This is always a 45 minute round trip for him. So once it's on his appointment, shortcuts will recognize, okay, for 45 minutes, Andy is unavailable at this time. And when you right click, you can put notes on your tasks. You can recur it. We'll talk about recur in just a moment, or you can delete them. 
So you can do that and help build out your employee's availability. So I can go to tomorrow. And if the staff decides that tomorrow they want to change their lunch breaks to different times. So George says, I'd like to go first tomorrow. So I'm going to take an early lunch, 1130. So tomorrow I can already put in George, this task, his lunch at 1130, 11 to 12. And then Brad wants to take his lunch at 12 o'clock. Now, rather than constantly shortening that task, I'm going to edit and say from now on, every time I choose the lunch task, it's 30 minutes. And then at 12.30, Andy's going to take his lunch. And finally, at 1 o'clock, Matt's going to take his lunch. So now tomorrow's schedule is ready to go. And let me go back to today. I hope that makes sense for everybody. Now, if you're not taking notes, that's okay. We are recording this presentation. So after the presentation, a little bit later this afternoon, you're going to get an email with links on everything that we covered. So now we're going to talk about some tips, tricks, and extras. If you're working the front desk or if you're a manager or a new hire and you need to know, all right, there's some advanced features in the appointment book. How do I, how do I work with a group, for example, a wedding party or a family that comes in? How do I repeat my appointment? If I have a regular customer that comes in every Friday for a blowout, how do I make sure they have a standing appointment? How does the appointment assistant work? What about the wait list? Or if the staff needs to leave notes or record messages, how does all of that work? So let's actually go into shortcuts and do just that. So we have a number of appointments on our schedule. Now, if some of these people are in a group, then we want to mark them. So if you're a larger salon or a spa and you have 30 chairs or two rooms with waxing tables and a massage therapist on staff and you just have a lot on your appointment book that you need to keep track of and you want to make sure that your staff is aware that you're dealing with a wedding party or a family and you don't want to separate these customers, especially if one person's going to pay for everybody's visit. So you can start making groups. To make a group, it's very simple. You choose a person's name. So in this case, we'll choose Rob, and we'll right click, and we'll add them to a group. Now, by default, you want to press Add to a new group. And shortcuts, we'll just put in a number. This is group number one, group number two, group number three. But you can always delete the group name and instead type in the family name or the wedding party name. Now, I've created a group already. So today, I have two groups. You're either in Ray's group or Cardi's group. So I'll say Rob is a, a member of Ray's group. And as soon as I do that, I get two double dots on the bottom corner of his appointment. So even though George is going to do one service, and perhaps Brad is going to do another service for Rob, both of the employees now know, okay, this person's in a group. Who's the other member of the group? I can right click on Ray and say he is in the Ray group. So right away, using this double dot method, everybody on staff is aware that these customers, no matter how many services or how big the group is, they're all in one party. So then I can right click on Cardi and she's in her own group. And as soon as I put her in a group, then shortcuts uses the same double dot. So perhaps Ray, no, I'll say Dave here, is in Cardi's group as well. So shortcuts will automatically randomize those double dots. So it doesn't matter how many families or how many wedding parties come in. You can always create as many groups as you need. And perhaps you may see a yellow and blue dot on the screen, a blue and a green dot, two yellow dots, and that's how you'll be able to follow these customers. Now, one of the important rules, whenever you have a group, to make sure that everybody can check out at the point of sale, once you group these customers, don't forget to mark them as arrived when they actually do arrive. Because shortcuts 
will not let you check out a group or a party unless every member of that group has been marked as arrived. So if you start using groups, then don't forget, put them in a group, but also arrive the client. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do. So we're able to group customers together. So how do you recur appointments? If you have a standing appointment, how are you able to then repeat this appointment? So we have a shortcuts test customer here. And perhaps they come in at 11 o'clock every Monday and George does the haircut. And this customer is a regular. They like to get their haircut by George at 11 every Monday. So they want to keep this appointment on a weekly basis. So to mark it and to make it a repeat, you can right click. And then in the middle of the list, you have the ability to recur. Now, repeating an appointment in Shortcuts is very easy. Once you choose recur, Shortcuts will only ask you two things. The first question, when is the customer's next visit? Well, if this customer comes in every Monday, then their next visit would be April 22nd, for example. Once Shortcuts recognizes, okay, they come in weekly. For how long do they want to keep that appointment? Well, this customer comes in every week and for at least the next year, he's going to want to hold that spot. So using the pull down menu, I'll say up until the last Monday in December. And just like that, Shortcuts will make a future appointment with George every Monday at 11 o'clock. Now, if there was a conflict, if George already had a different customer at that same time, then Shortcuts will warn you. It'll say, sorry, I can't make the appointment for this particular June the 2nd, but every following Monday, every consecutive Monday will still be booked like normal. So you do have that ability. Or if George is scheduled, he's going on vacation in a few weeks. If that vacation time is marked in Shortcuts, then Shortcuts will warn you, sorry, George is not available for three weeks in September, those Mondays he's going to be out. So it'll skip those, but go to the following Monday. So not only can you recur an appointment, you can also recur a task. Now let's say George likes to take his lunch a little bit later. So he'd like to hold on to the two or maybe even the three o'clock time for his lunch every Monday or even every day of the week. So if he wants to hold on to it every day of the week, we can right click and recur a task as well. So we'll right click and shortcuts will say, when is his, the next time he does this task? Well, that would be tomorrow. He takes lunch tomorrow. So the 16th, so shortcuts recognizes, okay, every day until when? So maybe I like to book out my staff for at least three or four months at a time. So I'll choose the last day in July. So every weekday, when George is working, he will be booked for this task. Now it's warning me that on these certain Mondays, George is not available, usually because his schedule is not entered for Mondays. But every other day of the week, he, he will have that task on his appointment. So you can recur tasks as well as appointments and repeat them for however long you need to. So then the appointment notes. This is very important when you're working with your staff, especially if you have a color team or a haircut team that likes to record information. What types of haircuts does the customer like to get? If they have a color formula, where do you record that color formula? How does the staff find it? The easiest way to do that is right from the appointment book. Whenever a customer comes in and has an appointment, if you needed to write down a color formula, you want to put that in their history. To get to a customer's history, you just double click on an appointment. When you double click, Shortcuts will show you any current or future appointments. But at the bottom of the screen, your two most important buttons are right here, history or card. History is where you want to record every client visit. Now in this case, 
Everything the customer has ever had, every service, every product they've ever purchased will appear in their history. But at the bottom of the screen where it says notes, this is where you record their actual visit notes. So in this case, this client has a particular haircut. So this client has a very simple haircut. We'll see it's a very basic clipper cut. Three on the top and two on the sides. But imagine if you're writing a color formula, you would put it on the same window. So, whatever that formula is. And then press done. And now that information is always in their history. So if this client was a regular customer, and perhaps Brad is his preferred employee, but Brad is out today, so you assign this appointment to Matt. Now, Matt's never had a visit from this customer. And this customer says, just give me the regular. Okay, all Matt has to do is double click and go to his history. And as long as Brad or the front desk, whoever it is, has been recording the information, Brad now says, oh, okay, uh, so you just, well, usually you get a clipper cut. Okay, I know exactly what to do. Or if you have a color formula, I know exactly what it is. And just to the right of that, if you have a color bar and you don't want the staff writing down the formula on their hand and running to the back, you can press the print button and print up that history. Now, I am getting a question on the side, and it looks like in some cases, those notes don't print. So just so you know, there is a way to print that information from the appointment book screen. If you don't necessarily go to the history and press the print button, one of the ways to print that information is to right click on the appointment. And there is a button that says CPC. What CPC stands for is client profile card. If I print this, shortcuts will print the customer's name, their contact number, the service they're receiving, and their history notes. And if you're a business, a salon, a spa, or barbershop, and usually you have a lot of customers that book online or make appointments in advance, and you don't necessarily want the staff running back and forth to the computer to see who's next, what, who's coming in, you can always print their appointments ahead of time. To do that, at the very top of the screen where the staff names are, if I click one time, Shortcuts will show me the name of the employee or any specific levels or capabilities they have. If I double click on Brad, I have the ability to print up all of his appointments. And at the bottom of the list, there is a CPC button. Now, if you want to save some paper, there is a little checkbox on the bottom left corner. Print employee schedule and CPC on the receipt printer. So if you had a front desk person or you were the manager and you just wanted to make sure everybody knew who was coming in, you can click that checkbox, print the schedules, and every appointment the staff has, they'll be on a little piece of receipt paper. The staff member will know the name of the customer, what service they're coming in for, and even their last three history notes will all appear on that little piece of receipt. So you can just leave a stack of receipts at everybody's station so that the staff doesn't have to keep running back to the computer. Brad will know everybody that he has to see that morning. And perhaps as the appointment fills up for the afternoon, you can right click and just print up those customer CPCs. Now, if you have shortcuts and that information is not appearing when you're trying to print it, then it might be the version of shortcuts you're running or there might be something wrong with the client card. Please call the help desk so that we can investigate why you're not seeing that information. So I hope that answers the question that just came up. All right. So we know how to make appointments. We know how to move appointments, repeat appointments. Now using the wait list, using the appointment manager. So how does that work exactly? Well, in shortcuts, let's say George is a very popular employee and he has a few customers that he's seeing from 11 o'clock and let me move raise appointments over. And he is fairly busy this afternoon until he goes to lunch. 
So he has he has no openings between 11 and 3.30 through his lunch. And you have a customer that's very adamant. They're only available this afternoon to do a haircut. And please, if there's any openings for George this afternoon, let them know so that they can make an appointment. So how do you actually put a customer on the wait list? That's where this little green button on the corner comes into play. If I press it one time, this is the appointment assistant screen. Now, it looks complex, but it's actually quite simple. It's like a book. You go left to right, top to bottom. On the very first row, the first button you press is the client's button. We need to tell shortcuts. Who is the customer that is making a very special request? So in this case, I'll look for a customer and I'll just choose one of my random people. Let's see, Adam is the person. So Adam wants to make an appointment. Now by default, the appointment assistant wants to search from, from today for the next three months. What is the first availability? And it will show you all availabilities. But this customer is adamant. The only opening they have is today. So I'll set the from and the to date to today, the 15th. Now, does the customer want any opening as long as the business is available? No. They only want to come in this afternoon, sometime between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock. That's their only window, and they only want George to do the service. So we chose the name of the customer, what day they want to search for, and what time. If you're a salon or a spa and it's the holiday season, you know that from Thanksgiving, sometimes a little bit before Thanksgiving until the end of the year, usually your entire staff is completely booked out. But you'll have that client that says, if you have a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Sunday available between 2 and 4, and anything opens up, please let me know. You can actually tell shortcuts. Okay, from November 2nd until December, let's say, 20th before Christmas, if a Wednesday, a Saturday, or a Sunday is available from 2 to 4, well then, search for an opening. So that's the first row the name of the customer, and what times they want to come in. The second row is where we tell shortcuts, okay, what's the specific time that we need to set aside? Well, this customer wants an executive cut. And on the bottom center of the screen, we want to choose a specific employee. In this case, George. So shortcuts now knows this customer is searching for today between one and two o'clock, an executive haircut with George. Now, we already know George is completely booked out. There are no openings this afternoon. But we're going to press the search button at the bottom center of the screen anyway, so that shortcuts can check for an availability. The shortcuts will tell us there are no available times. Would this client like to go to the wait list? Yes, we would. Shortcuts will then ask me, are you sure you don't want to search for another day or time for this customer? And I'll say no. This customer is adamant. Today is the only day, this afternoon is the only time, and George is the only employee they want. So, where does that information go? On the bottom left corner, that's where you have this little hourglass icon. So this is our wait list. And I can look at all of the requests for today. So it shows us, Adam requested an executive cut. This afternoon between 1 and 2, he's waiting for it. So he's hoping that something opens up. So if you have a receptionist, if you have a front desk, and you start to get busy throughout the weeks or during the holidays, you can start to put customers on the wait list for very specific days and very specific times. So what happens if there is an opening for George's afternoon? So let's say he decides, okay, well, I can't really do Ray's appointment. How about I assign that to Brad instead? And he starts to move some appointments or somebody cancels and you delete an appointment. Keep a close eye on the bottom left corner, the hourglass icon, and watch what starts to happen. So as soon as shortcut starts to detect some openings, it's going to start calculating. Is there enough time for this walk-in customer to have his visit? And if there is, then shortcuts will make a recommendation. 
and I'll assign this over between 2 and 3 o'clock. So I'm making some edits on this schedule. I'll move this over. And oh, possibly because oh, between 1 and 2 o'clock. Oh, now I made the mistake of trying to book an appointment after this afternoon. Let me go a little bit later on this time so you can see what actually happens. He doesn't want 1 to 2. He actually wants later. This customer wants between 4 and 6 o'clock tonight. Okay, so this customer is waiting, and something opens up. So George's task or his appointments get moved around, and suddenly there's an opening this afternoon. Now, when you click on the wait list, a little icon will actually appear. No, I messed up. When I put that in there, let me redo that. Sorry, I got one step wrong. That was correct. Uh, three, no, four and five o'clock. I'll put it in between four and five o'clock. Four p.m. to five p.m. Bear with me just a moment. Let's find somebody else. There we go. Between four and five. And the service is an executive cut. And George. So this customer will remain on the wait list until something opens up. In this case, George is going to take a short lunch, and now his afternoon has become available. As soon as there is a cancellation or a task that's pushed out of the way, shortcuts will alert you. On the bottom left corner, it will say, hey, there's actually an opening. And when you go to that opening, shortcuts will show you this customer is now bookable for this time. So at the bottom of the screen, I can choose schedule, and I can call the customer and say, there is an opening this afternoon for George. Do you want to come in at 4 or 4.15 or 4.30? And the customer can say, the first available. I want 4 o'clock, please. Okay, so let me put you down for a 4, and let me book that. And this customer is definitely requesting that employee. So that is how you put a customer in the wait list, and shortcuts will alert you whenever there's an opening. So... At, during the holiday season, if something opens up on that Wednesday or Friday or Sunday, on that particular day when there's a cancellation and a deletion or a task that's moved out of the way, just keep an eye on that hourglass. It will alert you and say, there's an opening, you can book it. So this is maximizing your staff's time. Now, one last thing. At the very top of the screen, so your staff can always leave messages in the customer's history what types of cuts, what colors that they use, but sometimes you need to leave a message for a staff member. So this afternoon, Andy's going to daycare, but you want to make sure that he remembers uh, today he's responsible to pick up a few things from the beauty supply. So you can right click on Andy's name at the top of the screen, my staff member Andy, and leave him a message. And I'll say, uh, when you go to daycare, Don't forget to uh, pick up some razors. 
So at the very top of the screen, Andy says, oh, somebody left me a message. And if he clicks one time on his name, that message appears. Oh, so he'll remember when I go to daycare, I got to pick up some razors. So you can actually go tomorrow or the next day and leave a message for somebody else. So tomorrow, my message for Brad, it's Brad, it's your turn to take inventory. So that message will actually be waiting for Brad tomorrow. Now, if a customer calls and you have some staff members that are already booked one or two weeks in advance and the customer says, uh, I need to know, is this employee available on Thursday or Friday this week? To isolate one specific employee, if you right click on that employee's name at the top of the list and go view week, shortcuts will specify just one week for that staff member. So I can say, oh, absolutely, Brad has an opening on Thursday and Friday. What time would you like to come in? And the customer says, well, uh, how about the end of the month? Does he have any openings? At the bottom of the screen, you can actually see up to three weeks in advance for any staff member. So you can say, yes, next week, uh, there are some openings on Thursday and Friday. What day would you like to come in? And the customer says Friday at 12 o'clock. And there it is. We'll just find out the name of the customer and what service they'd like to come in for. Perhaps a little color service. And there it is. So those are some more advanced features that you should absolutely know about when it comes to working with the appointment book. Grouping customers, working with your filters, putting customers on the wait list, recurring their appointments. How does the appointment assistant work? leaving messages on the customer visits or leaving messages with your staff. So that's the appointment notes versus employee messages. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the cloud appointment book. Now, I'm not going to bring up the actual cloud appointment book uh, because what it is is essentially the same thing we just looked at. It's going to have your staff member names. It's going to show their appointments. You have all of the functionality that you would when it comes to making appointments, moving appointments, even creating tasks. But now, this is a new feature in Shortcuts, you can now do them on the cloud. So if you have a tablet or some other mobile device and you don't necessarily want your staff chained to the front desk, they can now make these appointments from the chair or just move around uh, the office or move around the salon. Now, if you don't have the cloud, you may want to contact your customer care rep and inquire, can you get the cloud services? Because this may require you to upgrade the version of shortcuts you have. If you haven't run an upgrade in forever, it's been years as far as you remember, we may have to check that first before we enable your cloud services. So it's a very flexible solution, especially when you don't want to keep your front desk literally tied to the front desk. You want them to have the freedom to move around the salon do an inventory check, or give the mobile device to a staff member or an employee that's actually cutting the hair and help the customer make an appointment then and there. That is the perfect solution for you. So question time. Now during this portion, I may edit out some of the questions and instead you're just going to hear some blank here or this uh, slide may skip because these questions may not necessarily be related to what we're covering. So we'll give it a moment and you might pause to the next. Okay, so this is a new series from Shortcuts. We're going to do a class session every Monday. Next Monday, we're going to talk about the walk-in manager. Historically, that would be for barbershops or salons, spas, or in some cases, nail salons, where you just deal with a majority of walk-in clients, you're not necessarily capturing customer details or demographics. You do have that ability to do that. So you really check customers in, check customers out, and it, you're just trying to speed things up on your front desk. So that's what we're going to talk about next week with the walk-in manager. How do you make sure Shortcuts is tracking your staff's productivity, how do you check a customer in and out? So it's the A to Z on walk-in manager. That's what we're going to cover next Monday. 
Now, if you're a hybrid salon or spa or even barbershop in which you allow your customers to make appointments in advance, one week, two weeks, three months out, but you also take care of walk-ins, how do you streamline that operation? So Shortcuts actually allows you to do both. Have an appointment book so you can make appointments in advance, but deal strictly with a walk-in manager for your day-to-day -day operations. So even if a customer has an appointment, that appointment will appear on the walk-in manager where you're dealing with just 60 or 70% of your walk-ins for that day. But we'll talk about that next week. If you have any questions or if you'd like to find out more about our other solutions for cloud services or what else we have planned, be sure to reach out to your customer care rep. Here's our email and our phone number. And of course, we also check our Facebook. We also update new product announcements, new updates from Shortcuts on our Facebook page. So be sure to visit us, facebook.com slash Shortcuts North America. You can ask questions uh, of us there, and we'll be sure to reach out to you. So thank you for attending the inaugural Monday classroom session. Uh, be sure to let us know how we did. Uh, once this video is posted, I believe we'll be sending out a survey. Let us know what other topics you'd like to cover. And this series is on, I believe, a six-week cycle. So in a couple of weeks, if you have new staff members that you're onboarding, you want them to learn a little bit more about shortcuts, make sure to bookmark the Monday classroom sessions. I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of information out of this. So thank you for attending. I hope you learned something this, at, uh, this morning. Have a great rest of the day, and I hope to see you back next Monday.